So just for our listeners, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So who is Hannah Brown? I'm an artist based in London. Mm -hmm. Um, I make painting and sculpture. studied at the Royal College. I I left Mm -hmm. St Martin's in 1999. Left the MA at the Royal College in 2006. Mm -hmm. So what is the reason as to why you want to investigate the consumption and domestication of nature? It's an interest that's been with me for quite a while. So it's an ongoing inquiry, I suppose, or investigation. So would you say nature has always been like... Like the concept you've formed your artwork around and some of that's inspired you to do this. Yes, definitely. It's not always been articulated so centrally as that. Mm-hmm. When I was studying and in the early days of being a artist, yeah. I was making work that was a lot more conceptual, I suppose, or overtly conceptual. And then slowly the landscape began to creep in. And once I realised this, I started to allow it to be there and give it space a lot more and enjoy okay. it. I grew up in the countryside in Devon yeah. and it's, I guess, very dear to me. So there's mm-hmm. a connection with it, okay. which it seems natural to make work about and, and enjoy and investigate further. So it's, I think an artist's practice is often a, a long investigation of a subject matter. So with this new exhibition, The Winter Girls, uh, can you just quickly describe to me how this project began? It began when I was invited to visit the Art Centre last summer. When I visited here, I realised what a special site it was. It's mm-hmm. quite unique as, a, yeah. as an art centre, as a gallery, with the other facilities there are here. And the people that come here and use the space, Mm -hmm. it's a real sort of, has a really good sense of community. And I think it's quite special. And so I wanted to respond to the site specifically rather than make work in London and sort of just drop it in without sort of engaging. So the site, in a way, helped you create the pieces that are at the gallery today? Definitely, yes. Okay, so what on the site did you use to create these pieces? Well, the main inspiration was meeting Rodney Dangerfield, the site's beekeeper, we were given a tour of the site and you know all the buildings are really wonderful and but for some reason the bees in particular struck a chord with me which is quite unusual because i didn't maybe know that that affection was there beforehand but i think i understand that beekeepers are very passionate about what they do and that passion went to me directly and it was sort of contagious so in that visit mm-hmm. realized that the bees i wanted to be central Okay. Uh, to, or to give a central kind of role in these sculptures. Okay. So it was the chance mm-hmm. meeting mm-hmm. that started the theme of the show, which is the honeybee. Was that the reason why you called it the Winter Girls? Yes. Um, Rodney described the um, bees that stay in the hive over winter yeah. as the Winter Girls. My understanding is the hive goes down to about 5,000 workers and the queen, so it's quite a small amount compared to the summer, which is... I think 40 odd thousand in the average colony and again the affection in that term Mm -hmm. it just struck me straight away and I knew I wanted to call the show after that phrase. Okay now just for the benefits of our readers who are listening to this right now on the article you will see that we've included a picture of one of Hannah's sculptures so Hannah could you just describe us through this piece here for us? Sure well this piece It's quite abstract, I suppose, in the way it looks. So there is a reference to the bees in that there is a honeycomb form within it. There's also wood that's been collected from the grounds of Great Linford, which has been kiln-dried in the pottery here. And I've constructed the sculpture out of a range of materials, so it's made to look like ceramics. I hope if people think they're ceramics, then I've achieved that. But actually, it's mixed media. And the visual reference point for it, the aesthetic reference, comes from English ceramics in the interim post-war period. So Mm -hmm. companies like Silvac and Crown Devon and Carltonware, which my family have collected for many years. So I grew up around it. So in Mm -hmm. the same way as nature crept into the work, the pottery is starting to creep in. And I'm really enjoying that. So these sculptures explore the physical relationship between nature and human experience. Am I right in saying that you think we need to be aware more of our relationship with nature? I think it's always good to be aware, Mm -hmm. yes, of of nature. How Mm -hmm. we use it, how we interact with it, Mm -hmm. how we consider it and Mm -hmm. reproduce it in terms of of work and um, the ideals that are placed on it. Yeah. So yes, I don't Mm -hmm. have maybe like a sort of one-line message, uh, but of Mm -hmm. course environmental concerns and Mm -hmm. our involvement with 
nature is very important to me. Okay. So why did you choose sculpture then rather than paintings? I know in the gallery we have got one of your paintings on show. Yep. So what made you want to do a sculpture rather than a picture? I think because of the pictorial space in a painting, you have mm. this fictional space that you enter. It's mm-hmm. very much the sort of image. And I think with that, we suspend disbelief maybe, and, and I say, as I say, enter that space. But there's something about the physicality of an object which is present with you that you look at in the round and engage with on a different level much more physical and that seemed to be appropriate with the engagement of the landscape Mm -hmm. so that in the paintings they're often very idealized views on purpose I I make them in that way Mm -hmm. but the sculptures are quite crude by comparison and I enjoy that crudeness and the the bulk of the object Mm -hmm. the form Okay, and because we're on community station, what do you hope the community gets out from your project? I hope that they enjoy them. I I hope that they're playful and that there's something that maybe might entertain a little or that they can appreciate in the... Well, I can just interrupt you. Uh, While I was here down at the centre, I can tell you that Claire showed them around to kids and they absolutely loved the sculptures. I know they absolutely enjoyed looking at it and they could pick out which colour that was going directly at them. So definitely entertaining, I would agree. Wonderful. So what will happen to these sculptures when the exhibition closes? Where, where would they go? They will go back to my studio, okay. I suppose. It would be great to show them again as a body of work because mm-hmm. it's been really good to work on a series of sculptures and that, that although there are six, they work as a group. But for the moment, as far as I know, they're coming back to Hackney Wick. So. Okay. <laughs> And just quickly, are we going to be seeing you again in Milton Keynes at Hopefully. the Art Centre? Yeah. yeah.